नमस्कार दोस्तों इन दिस वेरी स्पेशल सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ वेरी क्विक लुक एट 25 25 मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट नॉवेल्स इन इंग्लिश मोस्ट ऑफ दीज नॉवेल्स आर रिटर्न ड्यूरिंग द पोस्ट वॉर पीरियड आफ्टर द पोस्ट वॉर पीरियड और वी कैन से दे कवर द लेट मॉडर्निज्म एंड पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म पीरियड एंड दीज 25 नॉवेल्स आर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वर्क्स माय डियर फ्रेंड्स for the upcoming exams so i recommend that you go through all these novels quickly know about their writers the story in the brief the major character or something uh, that is additionally important by these works so this is a ready made quick reference for the upcoming exam and we will start uh, the first novel we are going to talk about is the age of innocence uh, remember the uh, year of publication is 1921 it is written by edith wharton she was an american novelist and this work is winner of the 1921 pulitzer prize you all know very well pulitzer prize is one of the most esteemed prizes in the field of literature if we briefly look at the story and the characters it is a story of newland archer who is a member of elite society of new york and he is engaged to may welland okay then he becomes attracted towards ellen olenska now ellen olenska she is mary's cousin and she has just arrived from europe to uh, new york and uh, the reason of her coming is that she has abandoned her cruel and infidel polish husband who belong to Pol uh, poland now archer quickly falls in love with this uh, uh, with this girl allen he reluctantly marries me but he is not able to forget allen's very carefree unconventional way of life even after marriage archer and allen carry on their affair until allen suddenly announces going back to europe to her husband dekhi main aapko bata deta hu reason kya hota hai jaise hi may announce karti hai her pregnancy this this basically is like a setback to allen who is now no more uh, ready to carry on this affair so she in a party uh, she reveals her plan to go back to europe and once again newland is also shocked archer is also shocked after 25 years now may is dead uh, archer once again gets a chance to meet allen in france 25 saalon mein wo mile nahi hai inse and his son uh, is planning a visit to paris and uh, he knows that he will meet uh, allen there at the last moment he decides to send his son alone happy to indulge in the memories of the past only so it's a beautiful novel almost on the lines of tender is the night uh, written by f scott fitzgerald who was the contemporary of uh, edith wharton okay number 2 second novel which is very important questions are regularly asked from these work under the volcano written in 1947 writer is malcolm lowry he is an english novelist okay the novel uh, focuses on the last day of geoffrey furman geoffrey furman is a british consul but at present he is living in mexico who suffers from severe alcoholism okay he is a chronic alcoholic there are flashbacks in which he tells uh, we are told about furman's relationship with his wife ivan yavan and uh, yavan uh, um, uh, also is not happy with this marriage his constant hallucinations now frustrated with her, her husband yavan is having an affair with hugh who is furman's younger brother uh, he is visiting them um, in mexico now in the present yavan and uh, hugh are searching for furman he is uh, disappearing for last 3 or 4 days bilkul unka kahi pata nahi chal raha hai and during this search they they come to a fork in the uh, road बिल्कुल सड़क दो पार्ट में बटी हुई है एंड देयर आर टू वॉलो दैट इज वाइट द टाइटल अंडर द वॉलो ओके एंड सडनली देयर इज बुल कमिंग एंड देयर इज अ क्लैश एंड यवन इज किल्ड इन दिस एक्सीडेंट फर्दर मोर वी आर टोल्ड दैट फर्मन इज सिटिंग इन ए बार इन अंडर द शेडो ऑफ ए वॉल कैनो दिस द नेम ऑफ वॉल कैनो इज पोपो कैटेपिटल 
and after an argument with the local police officer he is shot and thrown into a ravine very interesting thing is that it is because of this uh, shot gun shot that the bull is basically excited and he runs from there causing death of ivan this novel became uh, we can say a best seller because of a brooding uh, character which was a hallmark of modernist literature number 3 this is the end of the affair a classic a romantic classic and also a modern classic which was published in 1951 uh, the author of this novel is graham green uh, who is a british novelist very popular one british novelist and the novel is the story of sara miles she is a childless housewife married to a civil servant uh, and uh, uh, the second protagonist of the novel is morris bandrix who is a novelist and he is an acquaintance of her husband they both are having an affair since the beginning of world war second in 1939 they are having clandestine meeting they are uh, very uh, we can say secretly carrying on their affair for a long time now what is the uh, turning point of the novel is that a bomb falls on morris house in 1944 it is war time and the lovers are together believing him dead sara is basically guilt ridden and she makes a rash promise to god that forces her to subsequently abandon morris without an explanation she promises god that if uh, survive, uh, morris survives uh, she won't meet him again and morris really survives and so uh, to fulfill her promise she abandons her that is why the title the end of the affair number 4 one uh, another classic another much talked about and uh, a novel which won many prizes that is the catcher in the rye which was published in 1951 and uh, the writer of this novel is j d salinger okay he is a very well known american novelist and the novel traces two days in the life of a 16 year old Holden Caulfield. So it is. Uh, we can say the protagonist is a teen, is boy, and uh, this novel is also the beginning of fashion of having a teenage boy as the protagonist. Remember, net me, ऐसा question भी पूछा जा सकता है. वो कौन कौन से novel हैं जिनमें teenage जो है protagonist का काम कर रहे हैं. Two of the, uh, such novels we will discuss in this series. now uh, he is expelled from his school panse because he has failed most of his classes now frustrated and totally disappointed with the environment of the school he decides to go back to his hometown manhattan 3 uh, days early than the scheduled program stay in a ho uh, hotel and he didn't tell his parents that he is back now at the hotel hotel he observes various people doing things and he is obviously a curious boy and he is disillusioned with this phony behavior of the world all the disillusions are shattered he comes to know the uh, we can say wicked reality of the world after having various adventures or rather misadventures he finally sneaks into his apartment uh, at home and then he tells his sister phoebe that how he has been expelled from the school phoebe obviously advises him to come back to parents uh, but uh, holden is not ready to do this he ends his narrative uh, there is also conversation with his favorite teacher and he also suggest him that he should come back but holden ends his narrative with telling the reader he is not going to tell the story of how he went home and got sick so this is basically beginning of we can say uh, the disillusionment era in lit literature a uh, next novel it is we can say a path breaking novel it is uh, one of those novel which started we can say dystopian literature or uh, we can say post war generation uh, there are also element of post modern modern fiction in it uh, what is the, the title is fahrenheit 451 actually the writer himself uh, refers that it is the temperature at which book paper catches fire and burns automatically begins to burn it is written by ray bradbury and ray bradbury is once again an american novelist 
it is a dystopian society dystopian novel dystopic novel uh, it is set in a dystopian future society that burns book in order to control dangerous ideas and unhappy concepts because the rulers they think that if book exists the, there will be chances of rebellion so they burn the books now the novel is divided into three parts dear friends कुछ नॉवेल्स ऐसे होते हैं जिनमें बहुत छोटी छोटी जानकारी काफी इंपॉर्टेंट होती है फेर एन आई फोर इस नॉवेल का नाम इस नॉवेल के टाइटल का मीनिंग राइटर एंड दीज थ्री पार्ट द हर्ट एंड द सेलेमेंडर द सीव एंड द सेंड एंड बर्निंग ब्राइट द नॉवेल इज डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री पार्ट एंड अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट the it is a story of the नेम ऑफ द प्रोटेगोनिस्ट इज गाय मॉन्टैन ओके ही इज अ फायरमैन once again an important fact the the job the, the the occupation of the protagonist who realizes the danger of book burning policy uh, in future society he basically he uh, come across a book and he, uh, he come across a secret society who has preserved the book and then he undergoes an extraordinary suffering finally quitting his job as a fireman and starting to preserve books even his wife uh, she basically spies on him and uh, she exposes uh, his activities next work once again next work uh, uh, why i i should tell it a path breaking work because it begin the fashion of uh, black writing go tell it on the mountain 1953 ka novel which was written by james baldwin and james baldwin was a black american novelist uh, very popular for his collection of uh, essays which are basically crux of his experience as a black american as a black in the white american society the title of the collection of the essays is notes of a native son this novel recounts the this is basically not a proper novel it is basically an autobiographical novel it is it recounts the course of the 14th birthday of john grimes in harlem harlem is a place in america which is famous for its black population and 1935 year and with flashback episodes about the lives of john's parents also john is basically very saddened and john is very perplex about his father's hatred towards him because he finds it unacceptable and he wants to know the reason behind it john basically is ignorant of the fact that he is actually not the real son not the biological son but he is the stepson of the man whom he thinks to be his real father next work is the ginger man written in 1955 it is a comedy classic it is a neo picaresque novel uh, written by jp don levy jp don levy is an irish american novelist it is set in post war dublin in 1947 it is a comic picaresque tale of the misadventures of sebastian dangerfield he is an irresponsible young american studying at trinity college dublin he is a women womanizer he is a booze loving person and he is roguish these are the typical features of a picaro uh, who who is basically adventure and fun loving character dangerfield does everything to escape the hard work and studies which often result in comic catastrophes the novel was in initially banned in both ireland and us for the apparent obscenity but later it proved to be a classic very popular one i hope you have heard the name of this great novel or we can say anti novel on the road which written in 1957 and the writer is jack kerouac jack kerouac is an american novelist it is a pioneering work of the post war beat generation beat generation which is known for breaking the molds of literature and it is basically one of the do's text which is uh, which is product of counter cultural hippie gypsy generation in the story young writer sal paradise who is based on the writer uh, kerouac himself is weary he is totally tired with the traditional academic routine Dean Moriarty who is actually Neil Cassidy another poeta belonging to the beats generation he changes sales outlook and inspires him to take route six across the united states and then begins this road trip he hitches rides mostly with trucks meeting and making a number of memorable acquaintances along the way 
in Denver in America. He joins Dean, Chad King, and Carlo Marx. It is based uh, Carlo Marx. The character of Carlo Marx is based on another beat poet, Allen Ginsberg, and they all had to San Francisco. As the novel ends, Sal meets and falls in love with Laura, and which which is basically sort of anticlimax because he decides to settle for a typical domestic life. Our next work, dear friends, is The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, 1959, and the writer is Alan Silito, who is a British novelist, and he belongs uh, to the group uh, which is known as Angry Young Man. You may have heard, of, uh, you must have heard the name of John Osborne and his play, uh, Angry uh, Look Back in Anger. Alan Silito also belonged to this particular group, and it is the story of an impoverished Nottingham teenager, Colin. Now, Colin is caught for robbing a bakery because he was very uh, hungry at that time. Colin is confined to a Boston, which is a prison for a delinquent uh, youth. Uh, he seeks a solace in long distance running. And because of this potential, uh, the school authorities are attracted towards this young um, talent. But during an important cross-country race, which he is winning, he stops running just short of the finish line to defy his captor. So once again, we can say uh, the anger, the frustration, the disillusionment that was to be found in the post-war young generation is very much surfaced in this novel. Our next novel is very popular one also. It is, it, will, it is adapted into a movie, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. It was published in 1961 and the writer is Muriel Spark. Muriel Spark, she is a Scottish novelist or English novelist. It is a story of Miss Jean Brody. She is a school teacher who educates her student at the Marcia Blaine School. Once again, this is highlighted point. Once again, I must tell you, net ke andar is novel ke liye, ye bahut kuch aisi choti choti information hai, which can make the difference uh, in Edinburgh in 1930s. Miss Jean Brody singles out six of her students, Sandy, Rose, Mary, Jenny, Monica, and Eunice for his special titles, and these six girls are known as the Brody set, and they form a very strong relationship with Miss Jean Brody. Now, Brody finds, uh, Brody finds herself attracted to the arts teacher, Teddy Lloyd, but he is already married. So, after some sort of hesitation, she decides to end her relationship, but one of her students, Monica, sees her sharing a kiss with Teddy. Miss Brody then has a brief affair with music teacher Gordon Lothar. However, she is still fixated with Lloyd and uh, he wa she wants him to fall down. So she develops a plan and intrigue with uh, Sandy to encourage Rose to have a sexual affair with Miss, Mr. Lloyd. But Sandy herself falls in love with Lloyd and uh, to basically expose Miss Brody, she tells the headmistress how Miss Brody encourages fascist thinking in the class and which causes Miss Brody's expulsion. Sandy later becomes a Catholic nun and she publishes her book and it is on her deathbed that Miss Brody comes to know about how Sandy betrayed her. This was very popular novel and it also began a fashion of writing a novel about a teacher and a set of pupils. Another novel, another landmark work, a work by a Nobel uh, Prize winner writer. It is Riders in the Chariot, written in 1961. The writer is Patrick White, who is an Australian writer and winner of Nobel Prize. The novel begins with an epigraph from The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, written by William Blake, and there he imagines a conversation with the prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel. Uh, but it tells the story of four characters who are based in the fictional town of Sars Perilla. Now, Sars Perilla is a, a fictional town. There are many characters, but four characters, they all have visions. That is why they all are riders in the chariot, angels' chariot. First, we have Miss Hare. She, uh, she, uh, she is an heiress to a crumbling mansion, dilapidating mansion, and the name of the mansion is Zanadu. She has a rich spiritual connection with the earth, plants, and small creatures of her estate. Mordecai Himmelfarb 
He is a Jewish refugee and a former professor who now works at a factory and also have a spiritual visions akin to Miss Hare. Then we have Ruth Godbold, uh, who is another outsider in the town, married to a drunkard, works as a laundress to feed her children, but she cares for Himmelfarb. And the last one, Elf Dabo, the only indigenous rider of the chariot who loves to paint religious themes. How the, the, the lives of these four characters cross and how their visions intermingled, how they get connected because of their spiritual and mystical visions. That is uh, very intricately portrayed by Patrick White in this very classical novel. Our next novel one, uh, dear friend, is a, a very important work of postmodern canon. It is The Golden Notebook, uh, written in 1962 by Doris Lessing. She is a British Rhodesian, uh, which is uh, now Jim, uh, Zimbabwe uh, novelist. Uh, she won Nobel Prize in 2007, and Margaret Jebel has called her works inner space fiction because most of her novels deal with the psyche of the uh, character. She wants uh, to show the inner, uh, we can say, landscape, inner escape of the characters. The main character of this novel is writer Anna Wolf, who is deliberately split, divided into different subjects. And there are four diaries. One is a black notebook, which is to do with Anna Wolf, the writer. Then there is a red notebook, which is concerned about the politics. Then there is a yellow notebook, in which I make stories out of my experience. And the blue notebook, which tries to be a diary. So four personalities we encounter in this novel. And very interesting book uh, 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 thing about this novel is that it is a metafiction because there is actually a novel within a novel. And the novel Free Women, it is also written by Anna and it frames the notebooks. Next work, a very popular work, which is as a novel is not only popular, but there is a movie adaptation made by Stanley Kubrick, which uh, basically uh, catapulted this novel into, we can say, uh, whole world. The name of the novel is A Clockwork Orange. Even the title itself is, uh, the writer has explained many times that how he picked the slang uh, from Working Man and uh, he converted into a title, uh, which basically means almost an impossible thing. And the writer is Anthony Burgess, who is an very prominent postmodern English novelist. It is uh, the genre of the novel is a dystopian dark comedy. Very important work, dear friends. Please pay um, attention to some facts about this novel. This novel is divided into three parts. First part is Alex World. The second part is Ludovico Technique. And the third part is After Prison. If we uh, talk about the story, the story takes place in a futuristic city which is governed by a repressive totalitarian super state. Alex, the protagonist, has a passion for classical music, but he is also a member of a vicious teen gang. So this is the second novel I was talking about in which a teenager is the protagonist. Alex, with his uh, gang, break in, uh, into a cottage and beat up the man inside before raping his wife while making him watch. Alex is arrested soon for murdering an elderly woman and is sentenced to 14 years in prison. Even in the prison, he beats, uh, for some times, he is basically accustomed to the prison, he is reading books, but uh, in a later incident, he beats to death another prisoner, and which causes him to undergo an experimental program, which is called Ludovico's Technique, which is developed by a German uh, uh, psychologist, Ludovico. It is a brutal form of brainwashing therapy that includes Alex watching films of Nazi atrocities. This treatment makes him physically sick if he even thinks about committing a crime and he loses, also he loses his love of the classical music also. But this side effect doesn't bother the state, which considers Alex's successful treatment a victory for law and order and plans to implement it on the large scale. Now, Alex, when he is, uh, he is basically chased by his uh, earlier gang members, 
he enters the cottage it is the cottage of the same man whose wife he has raped he come to know that this was the man uh, and alex feels quite guilty about it because the man is very cooperative and he tries to commit suicide by jumping through the window but he is rescued then taken to hospital and uh, thinking about his condition he is once again unconditioned he is once again made a uh, violent uh, basically um, by nature in the end alex himself lost desire for violence when he sees one of his friend married and living a peaceful life another very important fact jo baat aapko bahut dhyan mein rakhni hai there is a particular slang language which uh, burgess has used in this novel and the name for that language is natset it is derived from the russian slang language it is a private teenage slang in human language invented by the author the next novel which are we are going to discuss is pot noise complaint which is written by philip roth who is a jewish american novelist and roth created a character important point nathan zuckerman this is the character which features in many novels also in pulitzer winning american pastoral the novel is in form of a monologue it is confession to a psychiatrist by alexander potnoy who relates the rather shocking details of his obsession with masturbation and his domination by his overly possessive mother sophie the crude realism of the sexual act an irreverent portrait of jewish community it caused it caused uproar in america and banning of the book the french lieutenant women which is uh, published in 1969 it is one of the uh, best known works of post modern literature we will see the reason behind it it is written by john fowles who is an english novelist and he is also for, famous for his first novel the magus it is a story of sara woodruff who is who lives as now, now lives as a disgraced woman because she was ill used by a french sailor who returned to france after making relationship with her and turned out to be a married to another woman now she meets charles mitson and his fiance ernestina freeman sara tells charles her history and asks for his support now fowl offers three different endings to the narration first is charles marries ernestina their marriage is not a happy one and sara's fate is unknown before the second and third ending the narrator appears flips a coin to determine in which order he will portray the two other possible endings charles become intimate with sara breaks his engagement to ernestina but sara flees to london and charles will find her only after several years living with several artists and with a child this is second ending optional ending third one events are the same as in the second ending but when charles find sara again in london their union is so one the name of the rose published in 1980 by the famous semantician and writer umberto eco who is an italian author of reckon in the form of a novel it is also a discussion on the nature of truth from different perspective theological philosophical historical all these things are uh, it is a story it is in itself it is a modern mystery in 1937 William of Baskerville who is a Franciscan friar and Edso of Merck who is a young novice they arrive at a wealthy benedictine abbey in Italy on a secret mission there they learn that this peaceful community has been disturbed by the mysterious death of a young illuminator Adelmo of Otranto the abbey pleads with William to solve the mystery as the novel unfolds several other monks die under mysterious circumstances and william play the role of a detective his tools are the logic of aristotle theology of aquinas the empirical insights of franciscan theologian theologian and english philosopher rose bacon whom he revers the prodigious collection of the book is at the heart of this mystery for the library is forbidden to all but three men the abbot the, the librarian and his assistant finally it is revealed that a blind monk is behind these murders as he wants to keep secret the second book of aristotle's poetics in which the philosopher discusses laughter and the virtues of comedy 
even in the very beginning of the chapter there is a discussion with this very blind monk regarding the uh, we can say subversive effect of laughter the novel ends with the burning of the library and the two protagonists fleeing from there it is a very complicated novel but it is very famous it is translated and once again it is a very we can say original adaptation of this uh, novel is there in the form of a movie then instead of one novel remember this is series written by uh, american novelist john updike rabbit run which was very popular in 1960 rabbit redux every 10 years he is composing a novel rabbit redux 71 rabbit is rich 81 rabbit at rest 1990 and short novella rabbit remembered in 2001 uh, john updike is one of the four writers to win pulitzer prize for fiction more than once the novel form a chronicle of changes that occurred in american culture between 1950s and up to the end of the century a former basketball player harry rabbit angstrom the protagonist who gets the name rabbit from the way he twitches his nose he is married to janice who, uh, who is a careless and alcoholic woman in each of the subsequent novels as rabbit his wife janice and his son nelson and the people around them grow updike has chronicled the frustrations and the ambiguous times and the betrayals and reconciliations of the contemporary american society very important next work is waterland 1983 written by graham swift who is a british novelist it is a complex tale set in eastern england's low lying fence region it is narrated by tom crick it is one of those work which is basically uh, we can say uh, on the lines of new historicism we will see the reason uh, he is a middle aged history teacher tom is facing a personal crisis since he is about to be laid off from his job and his wife has been admitted to a mental hospital the many stories that tom crick tells his pupils from uh, form the substance of the novel which take place mainly in two time frames the present and the year 1943 when tom crick was 15 years old the traumatic events of his adolescence in the fence reach forward in time to influence the present so it's like a, we can say a circle coming complete this particular novel flower parrot 1984 written by julian barnes who is a british novelist another work another we can say pastiche work of post modernism it is apparently a realistic story of geoffrey brethwait who is a retired english doctor who has a deep interest in gustave flaubert who is uh, the very celebrated author of madame bovary brethwait discovers two stuffed parrot which are claimed to be flaubert parrots and he investigate the writer's public and private life through his diaries and letters to discover which of the two parrots really belong to him Beneath this narrative however runs a further personal drama concerning the infidelity and death of the narrator's wife Night at the Circus 1984 Angela Carter who is a British novelist this work it belongs to the uh, genre of magical realism it tells the story of Jack Welser who is a young Californian reporter who falls in love with Favors who is a winged woman when he interviews her love and his curiosity about whether her wings are genuine lead him to secretly join the circus where she works as a trapeze artist the circus tour comes to an end as an accident leaves walser amnesic uh, amnesiac and both him and fevers stranded in uh, siberia next work is the remains of the day written in 1989 which won that year's man booker prize it is written by kazuo ishiguro who is a british novelist of japanese descent and he won the nobel prize in 2017 uh, i must tell you he is an important writer uh, for present time he the novel is narrated by an english butler named stevens who serves at darlington hall now owned by mr faraday who is an american gentleman stevens was very fond of the original um, um, owner of the um, this particular hall but now he is somehow coping with the new master 
he has been here for the last 34 years and he is a circumspect serious person he is not comfortable in this joking which he calls bantering he decides to take a six day road trip to visit miss canton the former housekeeper of darlington hall who left 25 20 years earlier to get married Stevens has received a letter from her that she might like to return to her post as a housekeeper. Much of the narrative is, narrative is comprised of Stevens' memories of his work as a butler. At the end of the novel, Miss Canton confesses to Stevens her life may have turned out better if she had married him. This very statement makes Stevens quite sad and he very reluctantly comes back to Darlington Hall thinking that he must improve his skills of bantering. The Birth of Suburbia, 1990s novel by Hanif Qureshi, who is a British writer of Pakistani descent. It is an autobiographical building this roman, the novel of initiation about Karim Amir. These are the works which uh, Brick Lane by Monica Ali, Buddha of Suburbia by Hanif Qureshi. These are the works which are written by the, uh, we can say, generation of uh, expatriate or diaspora writers who basically presents their experience. Just like this novel, who tells the story of maturation against a backdrop of political and social change during the Thatcher era, he attempts to discover his place in life, search his identity. The novel used pastiche, which is a deliberate homage to the British 18th century initiation novels such as Henry Fielding's Tom Jones and Lawrence Stern's Tristram Shandy. Position, a romance. Uh, 1990, once again, it is winner of Booker Prize and written by A.S. Byer. Uh, the real name of uh, her is Dame Antonia Susan Duffy. It is, uh, uh, it is basically a novel of historiographic metafiction, a genre, a genre that blends forms of both historical fiction and metafiction. Once again, it is a typical uh, specimen of postmodern fiction. It is, about, it is about two contemporary academics, Roland Michel and Maud Bailey, who are basically researcher in, and they are researching the lives of two Victorian poets, Randolph Henry Ash and Christabel Lamothe, and they uncover a love affair between the two imaginary poets. The academics find themselves recreating and mirroring their own relationship, the romance of the poet. So, Byte mixes the historical real and fictional in such a way that it becomes almost impossible to distinguish between them, which is the, uh, we can say, hallmark of uh, a postmodern work. White Teeth in 2000, uh, written by J.D. Smith, who is an English writer, it focuses on the lives of two friends. The Bangladesh is Samad Iqbal and the Englishman Archie Jones and their families in London. The story begins on the New Year's morning in 1975 when Archie Jones is rescued from committing suicide. He is once again rescued by a Muslim, uh, we can say, uh, taxi driver. He later on marries much younger Clara and they have a daughter named Irene. As the time goes on, their lives intertwine with those of Archie's old friend Samad Iqbal a Bengali immigrant who served with him in the World War II, his wife Alsana and their twin son Magid and Millet who are completely opposite to each other in nature. Millet is kind of, uh, he joins radical Islamist group while Magid is uh, quite, um, we can say, having a progressive outlook. And to conclude this very interesting session, here are some trilogies and other longer sequences of novel which became, which was a feature of modern and post-war time. For example, Anthony Powell, he wrote The Music of Time in 12 volumes from 1951 to 1975. C.P. Snow, he wrote Strangers and Brothers in 11 volumes from 1940 to 1970. Olivia Manning, the Barton Trilogy from 1960 to 1962. Paul Scott, the Raj Quartet 1966 to 1975. He also won Booker Prize for one of the novel. Lawrence Duran, uh, who wrote Alexandria Quartet. The four novels of this quartet are Justine, Balthazar, Mount Olive, and Clea. And he also wrote 
Avignon Quintet, a collection of five novels. So this is what we can see. This is also one of the uh, we can say a uh, special characteristic of postmodern postwar novels that many writers wrote sequences of one, two, three, uh, even going to eleven or twelve novels. Okay, friends, this was all in our this session. The exams are almost uh, near, and you must pay complete attention to the 20th century works which we generally do not read and pay your full uh, full focus try to understand uh, try to learn the characters the major writers and i hope you all will be able to crack the exam this time all the best dear friends